What is going on guys? It's Evan here from Evan Sports Corner and I'm back with another video here on the channel. And today we got another 2050 Madden simulation video, although today we're not doing any simming. That part is done. If you guys want to kn know everything that happened and watch it, you know, all the seasons in real time, go watch the rest of the videos or in a playlist on my channel. Today we're just going over everything, we're recapping everything with the stats, the MVPs, the Super Bowls, all of that. And we're starting off with the Super Bowl is the most important aspect. And in the 2020s, we're going by decade here. So the Chiefs ended up winning three Super Bowls in this video, two of them coming in the 2020s. Pat Mahomes was dominant at the start. Then after the Chiefs had their little run, the Raiders won a Super Bowl. The Jags won a Super Bowl, their first in franchise history. The Cowboys somehow won a Super Bowl. It was great to see that. And then the Jets with Arch Manning and the Lions with Quinn Ewers ended up getting the last two Super Bowls of the decade, which was great to see. As a Texas Longhorn fan, it was great to see those two succeed. And the 2020s was a very, very fun decade. Now we start with the 2030s, and the Atlanta Falcons started off the decade with a Super Bowl. That was the Desmond Ritter, B. John Robinson era. That was a great Falcons team for a while. The Steelers and Seahawks ended up winning Super Bowls. And then the dynasty of the video, the Minnesota Vikings, ended up winning two Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes was like 39. He came in out of nowhere and won back-to-back -back with the Vikings to round out his career, which was insane. And Dante Moore ended up winning a couple Super Bowls with the Commanders towards the middle of the decade. So that middle portion of the decade from like 2034 to 2037 was dominated by the Vikings and Commanders. Pretty much it was more of a dynasty de uh, decade, you know, only a couple teams were able to win. But then as we rounded out the decade, the Eagles and Broncos ended up getting their Super Bowl rings. The Broncos had a wild Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys to round out the decade. And then we head into the final decade of the video and the Ravens ended up winning a Super Bowl with John Sullivan and the Bills won one with Mark Hampton. So the Bills ended up winning more Super Bowls with Hampton than Josh Allen, which was interesting. The Dolphins should have been the dynasty of the decade. They made like six Super Bowls in the decade or something around that. They were crazy. They dominated the AFC, only managed to pull out a couple Super Bowls, having the best QB in the league in Theo Irwin. And the Browns ended the video with the last Super Bowl. And the Vikings ended up getting three Super Bowls in the 2040s decade. That's why you don't see it there. But the Vikings were dominant in the 2040s along with the Dolphins, which the Dolphins easily should have been the dynasty of that decade. But the Vikings were better in the Super Bowl. And the Falcons also managed to get a couple rings in the 2040s with Austin Henley and Abdul Metcalf. That was a really good team. They had a really good team in the 2030s and they were able to get a couple more rings in the 2040s. Now we're on to the MVPs, and we're doing it by decade, just like the Super Bowls. Mahomes won the first couple of the video, which is to be expected. Hertz ended up getting a couple in the video and ended up getting the 2025 MVP. And then we had a random, random MVP with Sam Huard, who ended up replacing Justin Herbert in LA. Had a crazy year, threw for like 5,500 yards, which was insane. Joe Burrow got an MVP, and then Justin Fields had a couple MVPs towards the end of the the end of the decade and the start of the 2030s and then Kate Klubnik who ended up coming in the league and becoming a star for the Steelers ended up getting that MVP a lot of these guys are not too surprising Hurts, Mahomes, Burrow it's not surprising that they won I was pretty surprised that Josh Allen didn't ever win an MVP in this video which was really interesting but these guys kind of dominated as expected and now we're going to the 2030s and as I said Justin Fields won the first MVP of the decade then Desmond Ritter who had a great run there with the Falcons. B. John Robinson and him were quite the duo. He got an MVP. Bryce Young got an MVP. I think this is when he was with Tampa Bay, though. And then Jalen Hurts got 2033. CJ Stroud won the 2034 MVP. And then another kind of random MVP here was Calvin McClendon, who won the award. And then Dante Moore, who had a heck of a run with the Commanders for a few years there. He was a great QB in this video. He gets that MVP. And then Theo Irwin, who was the most accomplished quarterback in the video not named pat mahomes started his dominant run winning a couple mvps in the 2030s which was crazy to see and then yeah he was able to win a couple late, late in that decade and then trevor lawrence trevor lawrence was like 38 years old when he won his mvp which was crazy but he somehow managed to do it he beat theo Irwin out for the mvp and prevented him from winning four straight that was crazy but theo Irwin was the man this was when he started to really shine and this is when the dolphins started to dominate the league him and emmanuel chamberlain the star running back for that team this is when they started to get really scary so that was quite a decade the 2030s is actually a really fun decade to see and theo Irwin won a couple mvps towards the end which was great so we're about to hit the 2040s decade here and a lot of the mvps in the 2040s were won by theo Irwin, but 
Austin Henley, the Falcons quarterback, who ended up winning a couple Super Bowls, also won a couple MVPs. John Sullivan was the star for the Baltimore Ravens once Lamar Jackson left. And then we had a couple random MVPs. Dave Blanton, who replaced Arch Manning for the Jets, won an MVP. And then to round out the video, a journeyman named Eddie Gilmore had a crazy year and won the last MVP of the video. So the rest of the, the MVPs in the 2040s were won by Theo Irwin, who ended up winning like five MVPs this decade. It was the Theo Irwin decade. He was dominant. So now we're done with all the MVPs and Super Bowl winners. And now we are just going to look at some stats. And we're going to take out the legacy leaderboard to just see which players made the Hall of Fame in this video. And which players, you know, end up with the highest legacy score, winning Super Bowls and things of that nature. So we're about to check that out here in just a moment. So it's pretty cool. We get to go in and see all of the great stats and all the great players in this video. So we're going to start off with the legacy leaderboard. Like I said, Arthur Smith ended up being the best active head coach. He ended up actually having a better career than Andy Reid. He won a few Super Bowls with that Falcons team. He stayed there the whole video, which was crazy. Now in the quarterback race, Theo Irwin and Pat Mahomes ended up with the exact same legacy score. However, if I had to give the goat nod to someone, it would be Pat Mahomes. Mahomes won seven Super Bowls. Irwin edged him out on the MVPs, but it was Pat Mahomes who ended up having the most success. He won seven Super Bowls. Irwin, not too bad himself, though. He's an easy first bout Hall of Famer. Bryce Young had a really good career. He just was never able to get over the hump in the big Super Bowl game. He, will, he lost like three Super Bowls with both Carolina and Tampa Bay. Dante Moore, who I talked about, had a great career as well with the Commanders. Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow made the Hall of Fame. Arch Manning ended up making the Hall of Fame, which was cool. John Sullivan, that's the Ravens star quarterback. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. Austin Henley was a great QB late in the 2030s and 2040s with that Falcons team. Cade Club, Nick C.J. Stroud. And then Brent Shepard was one of the more interesting QBs in the video. He was a journeyman until he was like 25, and then he went to the Cowboys and started dominating. And some other current day quarterbacks like Caleb Williams, Russell Wilson, Quinn Ewers, Aaron Rodgers, of course, Lamar Jackson. These guys all made the Hall of Fame, which was cool to see. Dak Prescott made the Hall of Fame because of that one Super Bowl with the Cowboys. And yeah, a lot of these guys, that's pretty much all the Hall of Famers right there. As we'll scroll back up here and then head to the running backs. Jonathan Taylor ended up being the best running back of all time. Him and Andrew Stewart. Andrew Stewart was one heck of a player for those Pittsburgh Steelers. Josh Jacobs, Brees Hall, Kevin Peck, who was really good for the Cowboys. Bijan, Robinson, Saquon Pacheco, Emmanuel Chamberlain. All these guys making the Hall of Fame. Kenneth Walker had a good career. This Evan Stringer guy for the Commanders. Joe Mixon made the Hall of Fame. So a lot of good running backs in this video. A lot of them end up in the Hall of Fame, which is cool to see. And that's great. Now the wide receivers, Cedric Cherry was easily the best wide receiver of the video. He won a Super Bowl with John Sullivan and the Ravens. Amon St. Brown ended up having a really, really nice career for himself, as well as Chris Olave, Bruce Barrow, DeAndre Hopkins, IU, JSN, Smith and Jigba. Yeah, so Cooper Cup made the Hall of Fame. And then our only generational of the video, Travis Fields, or one of our only generationals. We had like three or four. But he's the one that the only one that we got to see finish his career made the Hall of Fame. And then the tight ends. We had a bunch of good tight ends as well. Greg Dolchich, out of all people, ended up making the Hall of Fame. Evan Ingram, Brock Bowers. No surprise there. Brock Bowers is great. Sam Laporta, George Kittle. Some guys who ended up making the Hall of Fame. Not too many Hall of Fame tight ends, but there were a few good ones. And the offensive lineman, no, no offensive lineman really made the Hall of Fame. It was just, it makes no sense. But a lot of these guys did make the Hall of Fame. Crew Dumfrey did, though, which was great. I mean, Crew Dumfrey's amazing, so not a surprise there. But a lot of these guys did not end up making the Hall of Fame, which was unfortunate. Pass rushes, we had a lot of great pass rushers. BJ Ojulari was dominant in the 2020s and 2030s. He was great. Keyshawn Silver was good. Quentin James, former number one. Overall pick was really good for the Saints all those years. Quinn Pugh, another high draft pick, made the Hall. Demarcus Lawrence, Greg Rousseau. A lot of guys had really good careers, but some of those guys were great. Mozzie Smith ended up being an absolute force for the Dallas Cowboys for a decade plus. Jalen Carter and Philly were great. Brian Brice as well. Chris Jones, of course, was fantastic. Not too many DTs made the Hall, but those guys did. Felix Anudike Ozuma. We're going to talk about his stats here in just a moment, but this guy was an absolute freak of nature 
in this sim. He was unstoppable for so many years. A couple other guys that you guys may recognize here. Kirk Carson was good. TJ Watt made the Hall of Fame along with Demarius Bigsby. Will Anderson and Max Crosby made the Hall along with Joey Bosa, Shaquille Leonard. All those guys end up making the Hall of Fame. Spencer McMaster was quite a dominant linebacker for the Tennessee Titans all those years. And then Nick Bolton, a couple other guys. It doesn't show like, it shows a few current day players like Bobby Wagner. Devin Lloyd was a really surprise one to me. But obviously there are some guys that they just don't show which is interesting. Like, I don't see Tom Brady on this. They just show the people from this sim. And now we're on the right to outside linebackers. Micah Parsons, Trenton Simpson, those guys made the Hall of Fame. Look at Khalil Mack, JOK made the Hall of Fame, which was cool to see. But, yeah, so we had the there were a lot of guys who made the Hall of Fame there. And cornerbacks, there were not many cornerbacks who ended up making the Hall of Fame. But Ingram, who's the star corner for the Dolphins, will make it. But not a lot of these guys did end up making the Hall of Fame. I think you need like a 10,000 legacy score to make the Hall of Fame. You need a good combination of awards, probably a Super Bowl. It's not easy to make the Hall of Fame. I was looking for other guys here that made the Hall of Fame. I was looking for Sauce Gardner mainly. I don't know why. I guess Sauce Gardner just kind of fell off. Tyron Matthew made the Hall of Fame. He's like one of the only safeties who ended up making it. Again, a lot of these guys could not get that legacy score. Strong safety had a couple other guys make the Hall of Fame, but no like current players. It's all auto-generated guys at this point. And then the kickers. The kickers sucked. I mean, Justin Tucker's still the only Hall of Fame kicker from this video. The rest of the guys stunk. So, yeah, there were a lot of great players in this video. Theo Irwin, Pat Mahomes, Felix Anudike Ozuma, yeah, BJ Jolari. And that brings us into the single game statistic record. So we got Theo Irwin, who was just a few yards off of that single game passing yards record, and a lot of other guys came close to breaking it. Mahomes, Theo Irwin, Jerry Clinton, a Bengals quarterback came really close. Joe Burrow was, well, that was actually a real life game, but Bryce Young had a really crazy game in 2040, so this record was able to, to stay, but Theo Irwin was really close to breaking that record, the single game passing yards record. It was close. Passing touchdowns, Arch Manning actually broke this record outright with, with eight touchdown game in 2041. So Arch had a crazy game there, and that is why he ended up breaking the record. Derek Johnson, the Patriots quarterback, had a 7 TD game, but this is actually a record that I did not think would get broken, but Arch managed to do it. Eight touchdowns in the game. Rushing yard record, this league and throughout the sim, it was a passing league, so there were not a lot of rushing yards. Guys weren't really doing that kind of stuff other than like Andrew Stewart. The rushing touchdowns in a game record, Andrew Stewart ended up getting second with five touchdowns. So Andrew Stewart was like one of the only consistently great running backs in the league. In the receiving yards department, there were not any guys who were able to climb the leaderboard. And in the receiving touchdowns game, there were a couple guys like Kyle Pitts and this Mickens guy, Howard for the Raiders, who were able to tie the record, but no one was able to beat it. It was one of those catches in a game a couple guys actually did manage to get up there. Taj Lane for the Cowboys was was had a 17 catch game, which was crazy. He was dominant for the Cowboys for a while there. And the single game sack record is safe as well. Although Felix Anudike Uzuma had a six sack game in 2030. And we'll get to that man's stats here in just a moment. The single season and career stats for him were insane. Interceptions, there weren't a lot of guys who got crazy amounts of interceptions in this. Even Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs wasn't getting crazy picks. The season passing record was absolutely annihilated by almost any decent quarterback in this league. Bryce Young ended up having the single season record once the sim was done. But Theo Irwin was on this top 10 list a bunch. Bryce Young, Mark Hampton, Sam Ward in his MVP year threw for 5,500. But this, re this record was annihilated. With the way the league is passing, it was annihilated. However, the passing touchdowns record was not. Theo Irwin was a few touchdowns off in 2038. Mahomes had a great great year in 2024. But, you know, no one was able to beat Peyton Manning's record. As Desmond Ritter, a bunch of guys, you know, threw upper 40s and low 50s touchdowns, but no one was able to beat Manning. And in the rushing yards for single season, again, not a lot of great running backs. But Jonathan Taylor almost had 2,000 yards in a season but he didn't really come close to breaking Eric Dickerson's record. However, the single-season touchdown record for rushing was tied by Isaiah Pacheco, who in 2030 had 28 touchdowns. I was very surprised when I saw that. Kevin Peck, who was really good for the Cowboys for a number of years, got in the top 10, as well as Andrew Stewart and Evan Stringer. So there were some guys who had a bunch of touchdowns, but 
they were not able to beat the record. This one was a record that I thought would get broken. I thought for sure that a receiver would go over 2,000. And Philip Thierry and this Williams guy for the Falcons came close. DeAndre Hopkins in 2025 kind of came out of nowhere and had an 1,800 yard season, but no one able to beat Megatron's record, which surprised me a bunch. Kerr ended up tying the record here for the receiving touchdowns record for the Falcons. He was a really good receiver in the 2030s. Cedric Terry had a 20 touchdown season as well. And a lot of guys, a lot of receivers in this sim ended up getting into the top 10, but no one was able to beat Randy Moss's record. And in passes caught in a season, Howard had a crazy year in 2050 for the Raiders. Thierry had a couple good seasons as well, but no one able to beat MT's record. The sack record is easily the one that surprised me the most. Just look at Felix Anudike Ozuma, man. He was on this list for top 10 sacks in a season so many times. And he, of course, broke the record. He had a 30-sack season, which was unbelievable. But, yeah, the sack record got, got crushed in this video. Felix and, Jay Ojula, and BJ Ojulari dominated. The interception record, we're not even going to look at it. it. It didn't really change much. Now we're on to the career stats, and at the end of his career, Pat Mahomes ended up with the most passing yards in NFL history. Bryce Young was about a thousand yards behind, but he couldn't catch Pat. And there you there you have it. Now, if we kept simming, Theo Irwin would probably get close to breaking the record, but for now, for the sim, Pat Mahomes broke it. And Mahomes is also the all-time leader for passing touchdowns. This one, Bryce Young was also second in, but Mahomes is still way, way ahead of the rest of the competition. Mahomes was easily the best QB in this video, no doubt. And a couple guys did manage to beat Emmett Smith's rushing yards record, Jonathan Taylor and Brees Hall ended up breaking Emmett Smith's record. There were not a lot of good auto-generated running backs in this video. The only good ones were like Andrew Stewart and Javon Ferguson. Other than that, no one else really did much. Andrew Stewart ended up having the all-time career rushing touchdowns record. Him and Kevin Peck, one and two, which was cool to see. Andrew Stewart was a monster for the Steelers in his prime, man. He was really good. And this record had a lot of guys, Emmanuel Chamberlain, Bijan Robinson, Isaiah Pacheco, a lot of guys came close. The receiving yards record is still in Jerry Rice's possession. However, Cedric Cherry, Jamar Chase, Amandra St. Brown, Chris Godwin, Chris Olave, Devontae Adams, Amari Cooper, and Travis Fields all managed to get into the top 10 for all-time receiving yards. But the record is still safe with Jerry Rice, who also still has the all-time touchdowns record. Even in a crazy passing league in the sim where quarterbacks were throwing for 5,000 yards on the regular, Jerry Rice is still the king of all receivers. But all these guys did manage to make the top 10. Chase, Godwin, Fields, JSN, they made the top 10. And the career catches record, again, still Jerry Rice. He's still got the triple crown on all this. A couple other guys did come closer to it. Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Devontae Adams, Pat Fryermuth, and Chris Olave made the top 10. Now the sacks record, which Felix Anudike Ozuma annihilated and came nearly, cl nearly close to 300. He was six sacks off, really close. DBJ Dulari also was in, up there as well. Miles Murphy, Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, Mozzie Smith with the most sacks for a defensive tackle all the time. He was insane. But Bruce Smith's record was destroyed by all these modern day pass rushers. And Felix Anudike Uzuma, it's pretty safe to say he's the greatest defensive lineman of all time. Sorry, Lawrence Taylor, who is the best pass rusher of all time. Felix has got to beat here. And that is it for all the stats. The interceptions obviously weren't touched. And that is it, man. That is it for the video. That is it for the simulation. I hope you guys all enjoyed. It was really fun recording this sim. It was really fun to see all the stats and all the records, all the Super Bowls. It was so much fun to record this series. Hope you guys all enjoyed. If you want to watch and see how this, all these stats came, came to happen, go watch all the other videos in the playlist. But I hope you guys all have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, and thank you for watching.